Wednesday, May 17th, 1995, an Army veteran, down on his luck and at odds with the world, entered a San Diego National Guard armory, stealing a 100,000 pound patent tank, taking the city of San Diego in dollars. What? Billy Nelson yet another blow to his already to Bro, this dude cannot win, bro. Holy shit. Holy cow, bro. This dude. This dude cannot win. Fuck. What it is, what it do, it's your boy JSK Reviews. Back with another banger. Listen, today, another Popo Medic Classic, bro. Another Popo Medic Classic, bro. You already know, based off the first Popo Medic video I did, um, I ain't even gonna lie. The Army Rangers versus the Crips video, bro. Not only did that video do tremendously well on my channel, but this dude Popo Medic be hit the way he like narrates his stories, bro. It makes me want to react to him even more. But y'all know right now I'm a Popo Medic fanboy, dude. I'm a fanboy right now. Every time he drops a video, I'll try to do a reaction to it, just because I love like his commentary. Like he kind of like brings like this, like this kind of like documentary, like like hood docu series vibe to his his channel you understand what i'm saying and it make me just want to talk about it, it make me want to watch it it makes me want to give y'all my raw reaction because when i'm not recording and i'm watching these videos bro i'll be at by the end of it i'll be wishing i recorded so i'm going to try to do all his videos shout out to him again man i don't like we don't know each other at all but this dude his channel is special it's something special now i ain't gonna lie i can see him hitting a million by the like the end of like middle next year or some shit like that like he's official but anyway, before we get into the video, I do want to say shout out to all the returning subscribers. Shout out to um, all the new people, you know what I mean, showing up. Hopefully, y'all mean, y'all find something y'all like, y'all decide to stay, stick around for a little bit. Hi, y'all. What up, Robbie in the cut. So look, we're going to get straight into the video without further ado. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's get into it. Let's go. Look at me, I'm on. Look at me, I'm on. Look at me. Wednesday, May 17th, 1995. An army veteran, down on his luck and at odds with the world, entered a San Diego National Guard armory, stealing a 100,000 pound patent tank, taking the what? city of San Diego hostage. Hold on. What? The world entered a San Diego National Guard armory, stealing a 100,000 pound patent tank, taking the city of San Diego hostage during a televised rampage. Bro, what? <laughs> And after desperately running out of options, authorities requested the assistance from the United States Marine Corps, requesting a Cobra attack helicopter to respond and take out the tank. Hold on. But not before a Marine turned police officer seized the moment, bringing a 9 mil to a tank fight. For 23 <laughs> hellish minutes, Yo. San Diego was on lockdown. Yo! In 1995, San Diego was arguably in its prime. The economy was booming, the Padres were decent, and while the city was considered family friendly, crime in San Diego peaked in the mid 90s. What the hell? And that kid was not going anywhere. What type of magic? Black magic? Crime in San that kid's not even running! In the mid Look at that! And while the city was considered family friendly, crime in San what? Diego was peaked in the mid 90s. And with the popular. Bro, I know I'm not tripping, bro. Y'all see that? Friendly, crime this kid's not even freaking running, bro. Peaked in the mid 90s. And with a population of 2.6 million, the hey. San Diego Police Department were severely overwhelmed. From gang violence, to homicides, to petty shit like, oh my god, it's too sunny, not sunny enough. But with that volume of crime, came an increased level of training and experience. The San Diego Police Department was a highly capable force. Bro, I can't even lie. I couldn't live back then, bro. I couldn't be an adult back then. I was born in 89, but I couldn't be no adult back then, bro. Why everything look ashy, bro? I don't care if it's just their cameras, bro. That's how they saw life. In my head, that's how they saw life through their eyes, bro. Ashy and grainy and 240p, bro. That's crazy. Ready for anything except a, a tank. However, San Diego was and still is a military town. And a lot of the members of the San Diego Police Department were military veterans. San who decided Diego. to settle down in the area after serving, many of whom understood armored warfare but few understood it like sean nelson a utah man who would later relocate with his family to san diego and after Yo! high school nelson enlisted bro this dude had a family he stole it he has kids a wife and he stole a tank bro i don't be know i don't be knowing what be going on like going through these dudes heads bro 
Like, <laughs> I don't know, bro. Imagine having a family, like having a home, everything like that. And then one day you're like, I'll be back, hon. I'm going to the store real quick. I'm going to, um, going to get some milk and some, some bread and shit, butter and shit. Right? And then you steal a tank, bro. Bro. Some people really need help. Like, they really need help. Like, mental help, bro. In the U.S. Army, where he attended armor school at Fort Knox, Kentucky, where he learned and mastered his craft as an armor crewman in 1970. Hey. And after completing his training, Nelson was deployed to West Germany with his tank battalion. He would get out of the army only two years later. But while serving, Nelson received multiple disciplinary actions, but nonetheless was honorably discharged in 1980. He returned to San Diego in pursuit of the American dream. He started his own plumbing business, married a woman with an equally successful career, and together they had it made. Nelson was quickly building a respectable reputation as a friendly plumber and was famously known within his community as the plumber with the work van bearing personalized plates. Shout out to all the blue collar people out there getting it done. Shout out to y'all. And fix. He took thousands of jobs, always quoted fair prices, and business was good. But the seemingly happy family man would soon descend through a chapter of misfortune in 1988, beginning oh. with the passing of his mother. Overwhelmed with grief, Nelson became extremely erratic. So erratic that his wife hopelessly filed for divorce in 1990, causing oh. Nelson to become even more erratic. And to make matters worse, shortly after his divorce, Damn. a motorcycle accident would leave Nelson with serious spinal injuries oh. and a lifetime of chronic pain. And this erratic behavior was only worsened. While being treated at Sharp Memorial Hospital, Nelson tried to walk out and was physically stopped by hospital security. And after being discharged, Nelson would file a lawsuit for $1.6 million in damages, what? citing negligence, assault, battery, and false imprisonment at the hands of Sharp Memorial Hospital. A Superior Court judge would later dismiss the case and the hospital countersued Nelson for $6,000. What? Dealing Nelson yet another blow to his already to Bro, this dude cannot win, bro. Holy shit. Holy cow, bro. This dude, this dude cannot win. Fuck. He got out of the military, 1980, right? He worked plumbing eight years. Right? He was alright, he's cool, right? Probably got some 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 trauma and shit from the military, right? Dude wife leaves him in 1988. Right? Dealing with a divorce. His mom dies, right? Then his health and his mental health starts de like declining even more. Bro, this dude gets falsely imprisoned because he doesn't want to stay in the hospital. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like they can do anything for him, right? Which should be his right. He, sh he, should have, he should be able to just walk out and be like, yo, I don't need your help anymore. I don't want your help. They shouldn't be like, he shouldn't be forced to stay, right? He sues them for $1.6 Supreme Court takes the case, bro. And then they drop it. They drop the case, bro. Right? They dropped the case. Then the hospital countersues him for six bands, bro. They countersued this dude for six thousand dollars, bro. And they got it, bro. Bust him. They bust him, bro. He can't win. This dude cannot win, bro. Well be. And to make matters even worse. His father's death would occur only two years later, in 1982, causing his life to spiral out of control. Bro. This dude. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna give a, I'm gonna do a stretch for him. I'm gonna do a stretch for him. He... Alright? This dude cannot win, bro. He's taking too much L's. Shit. And he turned heavily to drugs and alcohol. The feelings of hopelessness, desperation, coupled with a vague opinion that pain 
in misfortune predominate the world, the blue collar optimist became a pessimist. Damn. By 1995, Nelson would become a shell of his former self after his tools were stolen out of his work van. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my God. Bro, what's that dude in the Bible that God took everything from him? Bro, God took everything from him and said, hold on, who's this dude? Dude. Dude in Bible who God took everything from and said still be a supporter of him. Job, nigga, he's Job, bro. This dude is Job, bro. Fuck. <clears throat> this nigga's like the 1980s and 1990s Job, bro. Niggas are taking everything from him, nigga. They taking everything from him, bro. God damn. Niggas took the only, the only shit, nigga. The only thing he had left, bro. The only thing he had left were his tools, bro. Father just passed away. Bro, they took the nigga tools, bro. Damn. It's required to perform his plumbing duties. And with no money and no tools to fulfill his jobs, Nelson was shit out of luck. His utilities were shut off. His mailbox began to overflow with collection letters. And his live-in girlfriend at the time moved out and left him. He was now facing reality as the bank began proceedings to foreclose his home. Addiction began taking over, and Nelson began seriously using hard drugs. Bro. During odd evening hours, Nelson would dig in his backyard, reportedly digging a hole as deep as 20 feet, and telling his friends that he was mere inches from finding gold and possibly oil in his backyard. He began obsessing over his so-called mine shaft, with delusions that finding these natural resources would be his financial salvation. Nelson took this mine shaft so seriously, he filed a notice informing the county of San Diego of his plans to mine his backyard. When city engineers rejected Nelson's plans, Nelson became manic, and through his suffering and his drug abuse, Nelson developed a nihilistic worldview, a dangerous combination for a man without a family. Yo. As during this time, while showing a neighbor his mine shaft, Nelson stated that Oklahoma was good stuff in reference to the oklahoma city bombing perpetrated by timothy mcveigh which occurred the month prior on april 19th of that year an attack which left 168 people dead a massive car bomb exploded outside of a large federal building in downtown oklahoma the neighbor was unsure if nelson was condoning the attack or commenting on the drama the event caused over the last several weeks but it's obvious nelson took some oh. form of inspiration whether it be in the shape of mass destruction or self-destruction, he devised his plan only one month following the Oklahoma bombing. He picked his location Aaron in, National Guard Yeager. in the area of Kearney Mesa. He giving me Aaron Yeager vibes. The, end, the height of rush hour traffic. And on Wednesday, May 17th, in the seemingly utopian city of San Diego, Nelson drove his van to the National Guard. Utopian? How the fuck could that be a utopia? How in the fuck can this be a utopia, bro? This motherfucker, father died, mother died, wife left him, girlfriend left him, family left him, tools stolen, injuries, forced out the military. How the fuck can this be a utopia, bro? Is shit like that happening in this place? How can this be a utopia, bro? Armory. Although the gate to the vehicle yard was typically locked after 5 p.m., employees at the armory were working late and left the gate wide open. Nelson drove straight in. Guardsmen stared at the van, bearing the license plate, can't fix, and only assumed Nelson was supposed to be there, as he looked a part of some sort of repair, until he climbed down the hatch of a 57-ton M60 patent tank and fired it up. Bro, it's not even funny. I'm not, look, 
This is not... Look at her. She don't know what the fuck going on, bro. This is not funny. I'm not laughing at the fact that there's a dangerous 57-ton tank driving through the streets. I'm laughing because why is... How did he get that? How was he able to get that? Son, that, look, she walking, she got her head on her phone like, what, is that a phone? They didn't even have phones back then, did they? Damn, he whipping that bitch too. I saw you singing in a photograph. <laughs> you hear the music? <laughs> but I never Yo. Your name. Like, at what... I want to know, like, at what point did, like, they, like, re people realize, like, yo, there's a tank in the street. Like, when did the first cop see this? Or, like, the first detective see this shit, bro? Then it wasn't long after, bro. Bro. He driving to a dealership? <laughs> Yo. And the world was turning slower. Yo. Bro, he's the driving through the suburbs. 30 miles per hour. Nelson's 100,000 pound tank plowed through dozens of unattended parked cars, even coming within feet of knocking down one resident's house. And I always will do right by you. Yeah. He put that bitch in reverse. Oh. Bro, the law, the lawsuit that these civilians could have taken on the military, bro. Unbelievable, bro. The lawsuit had to be huge. Like, how did you allow a civilian to get into there, into your uh, motor pool, and? Gain access to a tank. And I'm not going to lie, bro. From my experience, we used to always have, in my unit, in 2ID, we used to always have issues with unlocked vehicles and shit like that. We used to always have issues with, like, soldiers leaving vehicles unlocked while the motor pool was open. So anybody could come in and just turn it on. It's not like a key system, bro. There's no key. For like a lot of the vehicles, it's just a push button start, right? Press the button, the the, the switch underneath the vehicle. And I mean, Humvees, son, this shit is crazy, bro. Y'all don't even realize how easy it is to do this, like. It became evident to police through his technical maneuvering that whoever was operating the tank was a trained professional. Given the threat posed and the inability to stop the threat, San Diego police notified the Marine Corps. Officials at Camp Pendleton suggested a Cobra attack helicopter, and the bird was prepped for takeoff. Yo. Bro, this is ridiculous. Y'all have no idea how ridiculous this is, bro. Nelson made his way northbound on Convoy Street before heading west onto Balboa Avenue. He entered the 805 freeway, heading southbound toward the 163 split. And while on the 805, he attempted to knock down a pedestrian bridge. And after multiple like, failed attempts, he eventually gave up. He made his way onto the 163 Bro. near the exit of Genesee when he made a sudden abrupt turn toward oncoming southbound traffic. Oh, no. Nah. Putting the lives of hundreds of innocent civilians in jeopardy. But while crushing through the center median, he disabled the left track and hung oh. the body of the tank atop the rubble. This nigga's a dick. Realizing how close he was to crushing oncoming vehicles, officers surrounded him and began scrambling with ideas on how to stop him. Dude, you gotta get that dog the fuck out of here before he squished. Gonna try to let a uh, uh, attack dog on a tank. Gunnery sergeant at the time with the Marine Corps Reserve leaped onto the hole of the tank and opened the hatch. He called down to Nelson and ordered him to surrender. Nelson looked up, ignored Officer Paxton, and continued lurching the tank back and forth in an attempt oh. to free him. Three other officers rushed in to assist Officer Paxton, including this guy right here who looks like uh, Chunk. From the Goonies. The officers <laughs> ordered Nelson to surrender, but Nelson continued to ignore Yo, them. And Nelson continued G'd throttling up. the tank. Police were left with no other options, as the Shoot. risk of him freeing the tank and mowing down oncoming traffic was far too dangerous. 
Officer Paxton fired his weapon one time, striking Nelson in the shoulder. Nelson collapsed, Damn. and officers rushed in to secure the scene. Damn. Damn, Nelson. Damn, Nelson had a hard life, though. Nelson, Nelson was, tired, was ironically bro. transported to Sharp Memorial Hospital, where he later succumbed to his wound. Oh. And on May 18th, at approximately 2.30 a.m., the tank was removed from the freeway. Miraculously, nobody else was hurt during this incident. The story shocked not only San Diego residents, but the nation alike. And Bro. debate soon followed as to whether or not police were justified in using lethal force. The question is, is there something else they could have done? One of the officers who ended up jumping on top of that tank to stop the chase, this cop operated a tank during Desert Storm. I know people look at it as a vehicle or a tank. That was a that was a moving weapon. That was the exactly. biggest weapon on the loose from the city of San Diego yesterday. Why wouldn't they maze him? Why wouldn't they do anything? They shot the guy and left with no answer. There's one thing what? that goes unmentioned Bro, in this story. Bro, this story. Sorry, all right, all right, all right. This dude was driving a 57 ton fucking cannon on wheels, bro. He was he almost drove into residence cribs. He almost killed people. He he was about to drive into oncoming traffic to possibly most likely flatten people, kill them, like remove them, completely delete them, bro. And y'all crying for this dude talking about, oh, is there anything you could have did? No, there's not. That's a fucking cannon, bro. That's a tank, bro. Y'all don't be understanding this shit, bro. Y'all just fucking civilians. Like, let me let me shut up, bro. I'm, I don't, don't want to get into a whole rant, but y'all don't understand how wicked that, like, how bonkers this video is, bro. That tank could have killed hundreds of people, bro. If he if he like wasn't so far outside of like his military service, he probably would have used that shit to perfection, bro, and killed niggas with that shit, bro. Y'all tripping. Given the facts and circumstances, his discontent for Sharp Memorial Hospital and his history there as a patient, the fact that his tank stalled near Genesee on the 163 may not be a coincidence. From my experience working on an ambulance in San Diego a long time ago, Genesee is the 163 exit to Sharp Memorial. The hospital property is less than a few hundred yards from the exit, and his tank stalled fronting the hospital. It's not impossible to imagine that's where Sean Nelson was heading. Oh! Bro. Oh, shit. Sean Nelson's brother, Scott Nelson, believes the shooting was justified. Nigga, even his brother says it's justified for killing hey, his stupid guys, ass. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure... Damn. That subscribe button. There's a lot more. Y'all go subscribe to Popo Medic, man. Go subscribe to Popo Medic. This is the end of the video. I mean, I gave y'all 20, like 20, at least 20 minutes of content. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I mean, if you are not a subscriber, if you stuck around to the end of the video, make sure y'all subscribe. If you are, shout out to you. If you're already a subscriber, continue showing love. You already know what time it is. We on our way to 550 subscribers. Next 600. Y'all already know what time it is, man. We real over here. We don't bullshit. We don't sugarcoat shit here. JC Reviews. I'm going to see y'all at the next one, man. DM me on the gram, too. I'm going to put my Instagram shit up there, too. Hit me up on Instagram. Send me some videos y'all want to see. Y'all want to see me react to something? Send it to me on Instagram. I'm constantly on Instagram. That's why I react to everything. Either hit me in the comments on YouTube or hit me on Instagram. I'll probably get back to you faster on Instagram. But, I mean, listen. JC Reviews. I'm out of here. See you on the next one. All right. Look at me, I'm on. 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 Can't stop, keep going. Can't stop, keep going. Can't stop, keep going. Can't stop, keep going. Look at me, I'm on. 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 Can't stop, keep going. Can't stop, keep going. Can't stop, keep going. Can't stop, keep going. OMG, I don't get pressed. Look at me.